You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. I'm Gerald Reyes. Ten years ago, I found great pleasure in doing bad businesses to make more money, to get ahead of my peers and to fulfill my selfish desires. Eventually, bad businesses turned into bad relationships. Apart from the illegal business, I also entered into an illicit affair. This resulted to my separation from my family. I felt so powerful and my ego was fully gratified. However, I also grew farther away from my family. My life was so miserable and my daughters hated me. Every time I, I visited them, they wanted to throw me out of the house. I thought I was happy living with another family and doing my illegal deals, but I wasn't. Deep inside, there was so much emptiness and guilt in my heart. My name is Naiji Reyes. Growing up, I thought I had everything a young girl wanted, a nice home, a good education, and parents who loved me. However, when I was in high school, my seemingly perfect world was crushed when I found out that my dad was having an affair and that my parents were separating. Being the firstborn, it took a huge blow on me emotionally as my mom and sisters confided in me. My heart was full of anger against my dad and even against God. I even swore to God that I would live life on my own terms. I began to rebel, going out and partying with friends every weekend and even having a boyfriend that my parents didn't approve of. Eventually, a friend of ours who went to CCF Alabang endorsed my wife and I for marriage counseling. I missed most of the sessions and never took it seriously. After a few months, my business eventually went bankrupt and my affair went sour. I also got sick and found myself going back to my family. My daughters resisted my presence and hated my wife for, for, for giving me another chance. I was in so much pain and confusion. The gospel was also shared to me a couple of times, but I resisted. However, as we continued to be counseled, I began to understand and eventually receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I realized how much I was sinning and turned to God for forgiveness. It was a great moment of peace and comfort. I couldn't accept how my mom could welcome my dad back into our lives. However, after they started to attend counseling sessions, I saw a gradual change. They got into less fights and started to talk about God at home. One day, they brought my sisters and I to one Sunday service and even placed us in a D group. There, I heard the gospel for the first time, how Jesus Christ died on the cross to save a sinner like me and how he loved me despite how much I've hurt him with my rebellion. I was hesitant, but it made me long for more than what I settled for. And after a couple more D-group meetings, I finally surrendered my life to Jesus. But though I was reconciled with my Heavenly Father, it took a while before I was truly reconciled with my earthly dad. Though we were civil, there was still tension whenever the past issues were brought up. When my parents started to attend D-group and GLC classes, I saw their eagerness to learn about God and how they strive to obey Him, even when it was hard or uncomfortable. I also began to enjoy attending these Bible studies and met friends there who invited me to join Elevate. But what really brought my dad and I together was joining the worship ministry. Volunteering in ministry, my dad and I spent a lot of time together. We would practice in the car whenever he took me to and from school, and my dad would even encourage me to memorize scripture during our car rides. It wasn't always fun, and we would still argue at times. But it was a way for us to talk about what happened in the past, say our apologies, and move on. My dad really went the extra mile, not only in helping me love the Word of God, but even in getting to know me as a person, asking about my day, even buying me snacks, and praying for my concerns. It was truly a time of healing for us as father and daughter as we served and grew together in Christ. Slowly, I regained her trust and respect. By the grace of God, my whole family has now reconciled. My wife and I, together with my daughters, are all serving as small group leaders. My daughters also became actively involved in Elevate. God is truly faithful. He did not allow my family to separate, and He paved the way for all of us to be saved. Praise God indeed. By the time, praise God. By the time Naiji graduated from college, he felt a call to serve God as full-time campus missionary in Elevate. Initially, my wife and I refused, thinking that she would be better off financially in a corporate environment. 
Though she obeyed, after 10 months of working, her calling to serve in campus ministry became stronger, and I saw how joyfully she served the Lord in Elevate. She would confide in me how much she wanted to obey God's calling in her life. And eventually, my wife and I began to pray hard to God for wisdom. We realized that though Naiji is our daughter, she's first God's, and we have to trust that He will take care of her wherever she wants to serve. We allowed her to apply as full-time campus missionary, and God continues to be faithful to her until today. In her four years of full-time work, I saw how God provided for her every need. God truly takes care of us and our children in ways we could never ask or imagine. He is indeed our provider, restorer, and savior. I am Gerald Reyes. And I am Naiji Reyes. To, to God, God be, be all, all the, the glory. glory. Last week, we were talking about knowing God's will no? and doing it. Alam, bakit, alam niyo bakit importante yan? Kasi life is too short to miss the real thing. Ang ikli lang unang buhay natin, ang bilis-ulis ng pangyayari. Looking at this child dito po sa harapan, na nakaupo rito, batang-bata pa po siya. And I realized that most of us, we were just like her when we were younger. Pero ang bilis ng pagkakataon, para hindi mo na maalala naging bata ka eh. Hindi mo na naalala na para ang dami ng taon nagdaan. Parang eto na pala tayo. Medyo iba na pala. Yung iba sa atin, iba nga, nagugulat na po. Pag babangon pa lang, masakit na yung talampakan, masakit na yung tuhod, masakit na yung balakang. Parang ang bilis ng mga pangyayari. Kaya ang tanong ng Panginoon Diyos, sabi niya, kaya I want you to understand my will because the days are evil. We are to overcome evil with good. Napakahaliwa, halagang challenge yun sa atin. But, Ang, ang challenge we how should we know? Yun po ang ating pinag-aralan last week, tama? We need to keep on studying the Word of God. We need to note our priorities. We need to to walk by the Holy uh, to really obey the authorities and walk by the Holy Spirit. And as in, talagang we prioritize Him in all things. Yung bang, yung we to be systematic. Talagang inaalam mo yung kalooban ng Diyos. So may I challenge you. Let's do this with all of our hearts. Alam nyo kung bakit? I know that ayaw niyong matawag kayo na bobits. Nakakanidihan. Nobody in this room who is in his right mind na gusto niyong matawag kayong mangmang. And sabi ng Bible, do not be unwise. Oh, sa madal sa tao, huwag kang maging bobits. Sabi niya, be wise. Understand the will of God. Napaka-importante yun nun. Kaya we need to understand the will of God. Now, ito po ang malaking problema. Pag nakita niyo po mga nangyayari ngayon sa paligid natin, magugulat po kayo. Ako na surprise po ako. I was watching a TV series before na sobrang tuwan-tuwa ako sa values, ang ganda-ganda ng tinuturo. And surprisingly, nung dumating yung bagong season, sinilip ko. Just the other day, sinilip ko. Sabi ko, ibang-iba na. Yung values, ang layo-layo na. Kasi yung first two season niya, talagang it was so, parang, parang so inspiring for leaders like us na parang wow, parang nakakatuwa yung kanyang values, yung morality, ganda. Pagdating ng ano, nung season na ito, nagulat ako sa ko, anong nyari? Ibang-iba na yung values. Alam nyo, doon ko na naintindihan ko ano na ang Amerika ngayon. It is similar to what Psalm 82 verse 5 say, which says, all the foundations of the society are being shaken to the core. Niyayanig na talaga to the very core. Grabe ho, ibang-iba na ho yung kanilang ano. An- anong ibig sabihin? Tingnan niyo pong sabi sa Isaiah. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitutes darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Nakakagulat na po yung mga nangyayari ngayon. Yung dating nakakadiri, ngayon parang okay na okay na. Pag ganoon, pag nanay ko, ay, ano ba yan? Ngayon parang, ano yan? Parang nakakagulat. Hindi ko masabi sa inyo, pero sasabihin ko na lang din. Nagulat ako, naghahalikan lalaki sa lalaki, sa TV. Parang sa ko, ano yan? Parang, ngayon ko lang, parang hindi ako makapaniwala. Parang, ano na nangyayari? Di ba? Parang noong panahon namin, makita ko nga ang babae at lalaki naghahalikan, nakakadiri eh. Siyempre sa labas, pero pag kami-kami lang, ha, grabe. Kasi, masamang tao din ako noon. Pero, Nung naging Christian ako, parang huwag na, ayoko na yan. Parang ganyan, hindi na tama yan. So, parang ngayon, mas malala na lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. Nakakagulat. Diba, noon, pagka pagsisabihin sa'yo noon, nung pagka kinakasal, diba? Diba, ang kanta pa, Here comes the bride, 
all dressed in white. Talagang, talagang ginagalang, naka, ano yun, naka, may, mayroon niyang veil sa muka, tapos talagang puting-puti kasi Maria Clara eh. Di ba? Doon sa palabas, nako, hindi pa mag-asawa, nagsasama na. Kaya ngayon, ano na kanta? Here comes the bride, three months inside. Parang ano na nangyari? Parang nabago na yung kultura. Parang, hey, 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 please, please, don't push on us your moral standard. Ah, bakit? Wala na ba talagang standard? No, hindi na natin naintindihan. Ngayon po, mas nakakakaba. Ang kanta, ganito. Here comes the bride, baby, beside. Naianak na. Now, we're laughing, but this is really happening nowadays. Now, ano nangyari? The very core that made America, America, nawawala na. Tatandaan ninyo na yung Christianismo turned the world upside down. As in, during the Greco-Roman ano, culture, ang babae, pag-usapan ng babae, wala, property lang ang babae. They have no say. Kaya sila, kaya because of Christianity, they were given ano po, rights. As in, they were being honored. Ibang-iba, because of Christianity. Mga bata, alam nyo ba, pag pin, eh, babata at babae, ha? noon, hindi papangalanan ng bata. Dahil pag eight day na, nung papangalanan, guys, pag hindi na nagustuhan, on the first seven days, pwede nang iba, ano eh, patayin. And it is an honor to the Greco-Roman rule, a Roman Empire during those days, na it is beautiful for parents who are willing to kill their children. Ibang klase. Ngayon, ito pa, yung pong mga ano, pagkaayaw, ibibilid na lang yung bata. In terms of human rights, walang human rights. Kasi ang human rights birth because of Christianity. Dahil ang Christians ang nagturo that we are created in the image of God. In, 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 in that way, we are to honor and we are to value life. Kaya ho, ganun na lang po yung pagbabago. Slavery. Because of Christians, they fought against slavery. Yun po yung moral na dinagdinala ho, kaya naalala ko. Sabi nga ho, nung, nung, ano, nung mag, nag-interview during the days of the rise of the, yung parang angat ng England. Ang England, para maintindihan nyo in terms of history, Wala ho yan. Barbaric nation yan. Kaya nga ho, nagkaroon sila ng bubonic plague eh. Sa dumi. Dahil sa dumi, dahil sa daga. Nagkanda matay ang maraming tao. Kaya ho, daming namamatay. Kasi nga dahil sa dumi. But because of Christianity, na bago po ang kanila pong sistema, naging malinis, yung hygiene na ituro, nun, na ituro sa Christianity because of the scripture, na ayos ho. Then there was a time, tinanong pa ho si Queen Victoria, was, why does the sun never set in England? Alam niyo, tinuro niya? Tinuro yung Bible. That's our secret. Kasi ho, kaya nga ho, ang slavery na tigil. Naalala niyo si, si John Newton, yung kumakanta ng Amazing Grace. Naalala niyo pa yon? Yan ho, slave trader yan. Slave trader. Pero no naging Christian, tinigil. At inilaban po nila yung against slavery. At ang isa sa mga lumaban, si William Wilberforce, bilang ano po, pin, ano, bilang bahagi ng kalang, ano, yung sa legislative body. Nilaban ho nila yan. Kaya ho, natigil ang slavery sa England. At dinala yan hanggang sa Amerika to the point na nagdigmaan pa sila, nagkaroon ng civil war. Why? Because they understood the value of human life. Ano siya sabi ko ho? If you want to turn this world right side up, back to its real, as into its real values of Christianity, para magkaroon ng kaayusan, ho, we need to really take God's, God's word seriously. Kaya ho, challenge ho sa atin, ang mga bata yung kinakabahan ako. Kasi hindi na sila natuturuan ng tama. Now, listen to this. Bakit ko didiinan to sa inyo? Yung pong Greco-Roman rule, noon pa lang, sin- grabe na ho, si- naalala nyo pa si Alexander the Great. Alam nyo pa ang history nyo, no? Si Alexander the Great may asawa at may boyfriend. Maintindihan nyo? Nangyayari na ngayon yan. When Christianity came in, tigil yan. Nabigla hong naisip nila yon. Kaya nga ang sabi ng pag-aaral ng sociologist, out of 88 civilizations, sabi nga noon, Yung pong civilization, all of them fell. All of them fell when their morality degre, ano, parang fell. Pag nung nasira na yung moralidad, bagsak na rin ho yung civilization. Without exemption. Ba't ko yan sinasabi sa inyo? Kasi yan ang aaralin natin sa Acts. ba sabi natin, truth matters. We are to change the world. 
Paano natin gagawin yan? O gusto pa na mas magandang kasaysayan? Mula sa Inglaterra, lumipa, nagkaroon po ng, karoon ng religious persecution. Para maintindihan nyo, ngayon, gusto nila kung ano yung religion ng hari, yun ang religion ng nation. Sobra, hindi po mayago ang marami. Umalis ang iba, tumakas, lumanap sila ng bagong lupain. And they established the new world, the USA. Oh, their constitution, doon pa lang ho sa unang bahagi, sa Philadelphia, sa, sinusundan ho nila ang scripture. Kaya naman, look at America today. Hello? Wala na pabagsak ng America. Bakit? Because they're turning their backs on the Lord. On the Lord. Pero ang amazing, yung Kristyanismo, pumunta ho sa, sa Latin America, pumunta ho sa Asia. Kaya tinan nyo, Isa sa pinakamalakas sa grupo ng Asia para maintindihan lang natin ang ating kasaysayan at para maintindihan natin kung anong mga nangyayari sa mundo. Singapore. Bakit ang lakas ng Singapore ang litlit na bansa? There was a time in the strength of Christianity in Singapore. Alam niyo sabi ng mga 6,000 students. Students, we will not engage ourselves in premarital sex because of our fear of Christ. Nabalita yan sa dyaryo. Oh, tingnan niyo naman pag mayroong advertisement na yung bata nang babasto sa magulang. Ah, papatanggal yung advertisement na yan. Bakit? Dahil hindi yan mabuting moral values. Amazing. Saan nila nakita yan? Dahil sa Bible, you are to respect your parents. Tama? At ito pang nagugulat. Hindi niyo pansin, pansin ang angat na angat ang China. Sinasagasaan na lang tayo. Oh, Siyempre, hindi lahat yan mag-agree. Ay, ulo ka ba? Hindi naman sinasadya. Okay na, okay na. Huwag nang magalit. Kaya lang nandun siya sa loob eh. Hindi ko maintindihan eh. Hindi sinasadya, pero natamaan yung bangka natin sa ating exclusive right. Mga ganyan. Pero huwag tayo magsalta ng politika. Nag-uusap lang tayo ng realidad. Bakit ang mga tan-China at pinagtatawanan tayo? Alam nyo yung sikreto? Si David Aikman, na writer ng news ng Time Magazine. Sabi ni David Aikman, he came out with a book. Tagal-tagal na nung book na to. Jesus is in Beijing. Many Christians, many, yung pong mga leaders, they were, ano po, secretly, mga secretly, mga Christians, and they're putting in values on Christianity, even in the issue of capitalism. Bakit? Ang kapitalismo, tinuro ng Kristyanismo, hindi yung komunista. Ah, napansin niyo ba yan? Hello? Bakit ko ito sinasabi sa inyo? Tingnan nyo, sino ba itong mga Christians na ito? Labing dalawa na ma- naghudas pa yung isa. Tapos naging 120. Tapos nagdagan ng 5,000. Tapos nabago na lang buong mundo. And look at the effect in Acts 17. Sorry ah, wag mo natin. Sabi niya, This man, referring to Paul and his team, who have upset the world, have come here also. So wow, look at the impact of the Christians. Si Paul and his team, sabi niya, Look at this man. They have already ups- they have already brought this world. Yeah, they upset the whole world. And look at them, they are here also. Paano na naapektuhan ng buong mundo during that time? Anong sikreto nila? Gusto niyo malaman? They took God's word seriously. Katina niyo yung mga Christians noon. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Wala naman silang kapangyarihan as what, what we have now. And yet, sila in terms of political power, wala. In terms of military power, wala. In terms, ang sa kanila, the Word of God, the apostles' teaching, what? The fellowship with one another, the love that they have for one another, and prayer. Yun ang daban nila. And they change the world right side up. Amazing, no? Bakit ko ito sinasabi sa inyo? May laban tayo. Pakisayin sa katabi mo. May laban tayo. If we will take God's word seriously, may laban tayo. Okay, let me just tell you this. When they take God's word seriously, talagang seryosong seryoso, to simplify it, what does it mean? Sino sa atin magsasabi sa inyo, gusto kong seryoso ay nasalta ng Diyos? Pakita sa kamay. I do not expect everyone to start. Uy, amazing! So everybody, you want to take God's word seriously. We want to bring change in this world. Amen? Now, what should we do? Let's simplify it. Okay? One, study apply and teach the Bible. Nakakanidian. I challenge the parents, study, apply. Maraming mga bata ngayon hindi na sumusunod sa Diyos because they feel that their parents are hypocrites. Bakit hypocrites? They teach but they don't apply. Diba? Kaya, 
apply, study, apply. We study how? By attending, by reading on our own, studying on our own, listen, and having our own D groups to study together. Let's take it seriously. Let's read it then so that we would know how to apply. Tama? Anja tayo? Then teach. Parents, teach your children. Now, yung mga office mates, teach them. Tell them. Show them. Taka, pakita natin. Kaya, kasi ang chance ito, hindi naman ako gifted sa teaching. No, no, no. This is our calling from God. Kaya nga po, ang topic natin for tonight, study, apply, and teach the Bible. Yan lang yung point natin. Study, apply, and teach the Bible. Tingnan nyo, sabi ng Bible, tingnan nyo, si Paul mismo, he instructed Timothy, kasama niya sa team. You how have ever, ever Continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Bano? And that from childhood. Oh, bata pa lang tinuturuan na sila. You have known the sacred writings. So, sa ibang passages, sinasabi na ang nagturo sa kanya yung lola niya at sa kananay niya. Kasi yung tatay niya, Greek, walang alam sa Bible. So, from childhood, tinuturuan na. Sabi niya, which are able to give you, look at the words, the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. Alam niyo po ba kung bakit ang mga tao, nagpap, they're running after pleasure? Alam niya? Why they're looking for something that will give them pleasure sa buhay? Because they only think that their lives is here on earth. Yung buhay dito lang sa lupa. Kaya magpakasaya na tayo. Siyempre, maikli lang ang buhay. Kaya nga sabi, eat, drink, and be merry. Di ba? Eh, kasi nakalimutan nilang may impyerno. Meron pa nga ako nariniganta. Mabuti pa daw sa impyerno, may beer. Nako, trust me, hindi mo maiinom. Bakit? Kumukulo. <laughs> hindi mo maawa. Kasi hindi tayo nagbibirat. Impyerno yun eh. Paano lalamig yun? Di ba? Kaya kahit na ano, kaya tingnan niyo po. And sabi niya, kaya naman, it leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And look at the words, look at the words. Hindi natapos doon. Sabi niya, all scripture is inspired by God. God's breath. No? Ito ba? Profitable for teaching. No? Tigil muna tayo doon. Pag sinabi mong God's breath, that's life. Yun ang na-miss ng maraming tao. Akala nila, ay, boring yan. Boring yan pag hindi mo talaga nakuha. But the moment you understand that breath of God is life. Naalala nyo nung kinreate niya yung tao? Yung anong kinreate yung tao? Wala. Ano lang yun eh? Mula sa lupa. Oh. And He breathed life. That's God's breath. Kaya ang tao hindi mabubuhay without the Word. Kaya naalala nyo sabi ni Satan, Jesus, if you're truly the Son of God, turn this stone, these stones into bread. Ano sagot ni Jesus? It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but with every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Oh, napansin niyo ba yan? Ano sinasabi niya? Kaya maraming tao dito, tataka sila, walang kabuhay-buhay. Walang life eh. Pakilala ko kayo kay George Muller. Si George Muller, ito ang kanyang challenge when he became a pastor. I will trust the Lord for my life. I will live by faith. Naglagay siya ng box na ganyan. Ito, para sa church needs. Naglagay siya ng box. Ito, para sa akin. If you feel burdened to support me, praise God. If you don't, it's okay. Okay ba On the first year, walang nang bibigay sa kanya. It's okay. Continue siya turo. Praying to the Lord. Hanggang, ito ang amazing, na hindi nagsusupport. At nagtayo siya ng orphanages. <laughs> orphanages. Trusting the Lord. There was even a time, nandito na yung mga orphans, inaalagaan niya. Nagpray pray siyang ganyan kay Lord. Lord, wala kaming almusal. Padalan niyo po kami ng gatas at tinapay. Meron pong nagtitinda ng gatas na balaho yung sasakyan niya, nasira. Sabi niya, naku, mapapanis dito pag hindi ko na-deliver. Nakita niya, may orphanage. Sabi niya, dito ko na lang painom kaysa mapanis. Kaya <laughs> talaga umaga. Di nung breakfast, pagkatapos niya mag-pray, may kumatok. Sabi niya nun, uh, pasensya na po kayo, nasiraan po ako. Eh, kaysa masira yung, yung ano, gatas, sa inyo na lang po. <laughs> Gabi, no? nag-pray lang, nasiraan pa yung mama. <laughs> so, nakainom, mga bata, nakainom ng gatas. Pero walang tinapay. 
For some reason, biglang may baker, nag-iisip, sabi niya, bayro mapanis ito, pinadala doon sa orphanages. So, nagkaroon ng tinapay. They saw how God answered and provided for them. And kung tinanong siya, in-interview siya, why did you put up orphanages? He, sabi niya, hindi ako nag-put up ng orphanages dahil awa ako sa mga bata. I put up orphanages because I want to prove the world that God is real and true to His words and He answers prayer. Amazing, no? Hindi naman gano'n ang kanyang challenge. Now, ito pa, ito pa, hindi pa tapos. Anong sikreto mo, George Muller? Before eating breakfast, I read my Bible. I make sure that my heart is happy. <laughs> you know, I make sure that my heart is happy. Every day of his life, I make my heart happy. Paano ka nagiging happy? Every time I read the scripture, I sense the joy that comes from God. Kaya, the hundred times ko nang nabasa yung Bible, sabi niya, I would always feel empty if I don't read my Bible. Kaya, I cannot go on with my day without first reading the Bible. Sa maraming tao, hindi, maka, hindi excited pag walang kape. Let me tell you, let me tell you this, the Bible is better than coffee. Alam niyo kung bakit? Tingnan niyo sabi ni Jesus, I am the bread of life. He who eats me will no longer be hungry and thirsty again. Pag nagkape ka, mauuhaw ka ulit. Hindi ko sinasabing masama magkape ha, baka mamisinterpret niyo. What I'm saying is, this is much better. You know why? Biro mo, hindi ka nagutom, hindi ka pa uhaw. Saan ka nakakita niyan? Kumain ka ng puto seko, mauhaw ka. Kumain ka ng sputnik, mauhaw ka. Di ba? Hello? Ako noon, nung bata kami, anong pagkain namin? Nutriban. Oh, benching ko lang noon. Huwag nyo nang kumpiting kung kailan pa yan. Sabi niya, oh, benching ko lang. Nutriban. Pero kailangan mo na inumin. Pero ang salita ng Diyos, si Jesus Christ, the Word, sabi niya, He who eats me will no longer be hungry and thirsty again. Nagkakandindihan. Now, ano sabi niya? Oops! God's brief. Kaya pala, walang kabuhay-buhay ang iba sa atin. Minsan, pagdating siya umaga, ay, papasok na naman sa opisina. Ano ba yan? Bakit ba? Alam mo, why? wake up early and spend time reading sa kapit pag hindi ka nabuhayan. Hindi ka nabuhayan. Naintindihan niyo? Now, ito pa. Hindi niyo. Hindi natapos doon. Profitable for what? Teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Wow! Sino ba naman? Pag maganda yung trabaho mo, anong resulta? Maganda rin! Pag pangit ang trabaho, pangit ang resulta. Tama ba? Now, if you are equipped for every good work, imagine the, the result. Goodness! Tama ba? Para wala kang kabuhay-buhay ah. Na, Naintindihan nyo? Yun ang chance. Kasi sabi ng Lord, this is why I'm telling you. Sabi niya, study, apply, and teach. Alam nyo kung bakit yung Bible minsan nag-aaral ka tapos nanunuyo ka? Kasi hindi mo ina-apply eh. Para yung Dead Sea. Tanggap ka ng tanggap, walang outlet. Kaya, patay. Walang kabuhay-buhay. Kahit maraming minerals, mama, patay. Kaya kailangan mo i-apply para magkaroon ng buhay. At doon ang excitement. Doon mo maintindihan, totoo talaga itong Word of God. Kasi in-apply mo eh. Sample, sample. Sino nagwa-worry sa inyo? Worry, worry. Oh, ang dami nagwa-worry, oh. Oh, bakit kinagwa-worry? Ano sabi ng Bible? Do not be anxious about anything. Oh, do not be anxious daw. Eh, Lord naman, ang liyabo naman eh. Paano naman ako hindi maging anxious? Ang dahil-dahil kong problema. Ano dapat mong gawin? Pray. Hindi pa tapos. Do not be anxious about everything, but pray and supplication with thanksgiving. O, tama ba? O, sa halip na mag-worry ka, ano dadagay mo? Mag-pray. Sabihin mo. Yung request mo, ano ba ang kinawa-worry mo? Sige, sabihin mo. Anong kinawa-worry mo? Lord, may utang po ko isang milyon. Sisingilin ako mamaya. Di sabihin mo sa Lord, Lord, may isang milyon ako utang. Sisingilin ako mamaya. O, di ba? Sabihin mo. Tapos, sabi ko nun, magpasalamat ka sa Diyos. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Dahil, sasagot ka. Either mababayaran ko ngayon o makukulong ako. At kung makukulong ako, thank you. Kasama kita. O, di ba? Naintindihan nyo? Hindi magaan yung puso mo. At least, wala kang winawari. Paano ka makulong ako? Eh, kasama mo naman si Lord eh. 
Paano kung gulpihin ako? Makakatulog ka rin. <laughs> Ayaw kong bigyan kayo ng false hope na babayaran agad. Minsan, minsan may consequence, pero there is something that you should understand. Minsan, doon makita ng Diyos, three, totoo. Ito ang, paano mo lalamang sinagot ka na ng Diyos? And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Yung isip mo at puso mo, natutuo na kay King Jesus. There was a guy who attended our service before. Eh tamang-tama, nabanggit ko yan tungkol sa Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Dumating siya, nag-exam siya for becoming a fellow. Doktor siya. Talagang sabi niya, ang labo ng sagot ko. Malabo, baka hindi ako papasa. Biro niyo umupo dito. Kumakanta, hindi makakanta. Worried. Kumakanta, hindi makafix yung isip niya sa Lord. Habang nakikinig sa message, walang pumapasok. Puro worry pumapasok. Puro, buti pa nga iba sa inyo, natutulog kayo. Pero siya hindi makatulog, then worry ng worry. Diba? Ngayon sabi niya, Oh, grabe, hindi ko na kaya. Biglang sinabi ko, do not be anxious. Oh, nagulat siya. Tapos bigla niya sabi, oh, Lord, patawarin niyo ako. Kahit nandito na ako, nagwa-worry pa ako. Lord, natatakot ako, baka bumagsak ako. Sinabi niya ngayon, Lord, tulungan niyo ako, tanggapin ko, pasado o bagsak, tanggapin ko ito ng maluwalhati sa akin. Salamat, Panginoon, because you know best. Bigla nakafocus siya kay Jesus. Nakikinig siya sa bayo mo, nakikinig siya mabuti. Tapos, oh, may konti, may nag-text. Doc, Congratulations. You have just passed your being a fellow. Oh, amazing! God answered this prayer. Minsan, kailangan mo sumunod para makita mo. Ayos ba yan? Hello? Kaya ito yung challenge. Kaya sabi ng Lord, don't just apply it. The moment you apply it, you teach it. Ito kasing common. Sabi nila, practice what you preach. Kalimutan nyo yan, hindi yan tama. Preach what you practice. Okay ba yan? Praktisin mo na, saka mo ituro para alam mo, pare ko, totoo to, subok ko na. Kaya sabi nga ng Bible, kaya ang Christianity, bakit mo sineshare? Taste and see that the Lord is good. O, di ba? Natikman ko na eh. Naranasan ko na. Hindi ko tayo kwento. Alam nga sabihin mo, alam mo, tanggapin mo si Jesus. Sasaya ang buhay mo. Totoo nga eh. Mula nang tinanggap ko si Jesus, tanggal ako sa trabaho. Patay ang magulang ko. Tapos wala kang kasaya-saya. Down na down na mukha mo. Di wala yun. Hindi makatotohanan yun. Ang sarap nung, alam mo, tanggapin mo si Jesus. Bakit? Kahit may problema ka, may kapayapaan ka. Would you believe? Tanggal ako sa trabaho. Pero trust the Lord. Ngayon, meron na. Di, sabi niya, may, ano na, trabaho na ako. Di, ang saya-saya niya. So, biglang, sabi niya, alam niyo, mula nung si Jesus, pero mo, talaga nagkaroon ng kagalakan sa puso. Regardless of the circumstance. O, di ba ang sarap nun? That's what we share because we have an encounter with the living God. Kaya we tell them, wow, this is really God. Now, punta tayo. Kaya, tandi nyo, ha? don't just teach when you do not apply. You know why? Sabi ng Bible. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to tell of my statutes and to take my covenant in your mouth? Anong karapatan mo na ituro yung aking salita? Sabi ganun, bakit? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. Hanya, anong karapatan mo eh? Hindi mo naman, hindi mo naman ginagalang yung salita ko. Wala kang control sa sarili mo. Hindi mo sinusunod ang salita ko. Alam nyo, ngayon, nagugulat ako, ang dami nagtuturo. Meron po ako na meet. Nagtuturo ko ng Bible. Parang, ang galing-galing magturo. Iniwan yung asawa. Inanal yung marriage, ni hindi alam na asawa na anal na siya. Para sumama sa iba. At ang gulat ko, ang nag- nagkasal pa sa kanila, pastor, nakilala ko din. Ay ko, ang nyari? Ano nangyari? Sabi ko, bakit nagkakaganto tayo? Siyempre, hindi ko alam ang buong kwento, pero kahit hindi ko alam ang buong kwento, napakasimple ng saltahan ng Diyos. Ayaw niya yun. Nakuha ninyo, kasi simple lang. Paano ka mag-aanal ng hindi alam? ba? Parang sinabi sa Isaiah, ewan ko, mapabasa ko lang sa inyo para makita nyo lang, baka akala ng loloko ko. Ayan. Who justify the wicked for a bribe and take away the rights of the ones who are in the right? ba? Paano mo nagawa yun? Kung hindi nagkaroon ng tama? Hello? Kasi hindi ko alam paano magagawa yun. Sa totoo lang ha, kung magpa-file ka ng anak, paano mo nagawa na hindi alam ng babae na naanal na lang? Amazing. Ha? Oh, nakuha ninyo? Mabuti pa siya. Alam niya. Ako, hindi ko alam. Now, what I'm saying is, gantong-ganto sinasabi ng Bible, ginajustify sa pamagitan ng paglalagay. Di ba? Di ba nakakatakot ang nangyayari sa atin? Punta tayo sa Acts 17. Paano nila in-apply itong bagay na ito? Matutuwa kayo. Now, let's look. 
Now, when they had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Now, para maintindihan nyo lang, ano nangyayari? They came from Philippi. Dito sila binugbog, kinulong, pero nagpupuri pa rin sa Panginoon Diyos. Naalala nyo? And after that, they were asked to leave the, the place. So, traveling to Amphipolis, Amphipolis, and Apollonia, they went to Thessalonica. Okay? Yan ang kanilang biyahe. Now, ang galing ni Paul, because he studied the Bible, he applied the Scripture, he took the Word of God seriously. Bakit ko na sabi? Sabi ng Bible, you shall be my witnesses. Tama? In Judea, Samaria, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, into the remotest part of the earth. They took that seriously. Ano sabi ng Bible? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, he took that seriously. So, they went. Now, amazing, ito sabi niya, napakatalino ni Paul. Sabi niya, and according to Paul's custom, since magtuturo ka ng Bible, as much as possible, bring it to those who are familiar with the Scripture. Tama ba? Kasi ang hirap magturo pag hindi alam yung Bible. Hello? Andiyan pa kayo? Mahirap magturo, hindi nila alam yung Bible. Baka, kunyari, pag sinabi ganun, ah, ano yan? Eh, totoo lang, ang hirap kasi naalala ko, mayroon nagbabaybo sa ating mga babae. Sabi niya, and as, just as, ano, silver is refined by fire, so is God refining you. Sabi niya, paano yun? Sa totoo, paano yun i-apply? Eh, hindi lang maintindihan, nagdi-discuss sila. So, ang ginawa ng babae, dahil hindi nila makuha, pumunta sa blacksmith, yung gumagawa ng mga silver ano, jewelries. Pinanood, sabi niya, ano ba ibig sabihin ng the silver refining by fire? Di pinanood. Ganito yan, ma'am. Itong mga silver na ito, dadalhin sa apoy para lahat ng mga, ano, yung mga dumi, yung mga, ano, tatanggal ng apoy. Eh, pero babantayan mo kasi masisira yan pag nasobrahan. So sabi niya, so, paano malalamang tama na? Paglabas, ma'am, ito makikita ko na yung mukha ko. Yun. Ayos na to. And ganun-ganun ang ginagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Ah, yun pala yun. Kapag ni-refine na tayo ng Diyos, dinadaan tayo sa mga maapalaapoy na pagsubok, mga fiery test. Paano alam ng Lord na tama na? Kasi pag tinignan ng Lord, kita niya na si Jesus Christ. Kita niya na yung sarili sa atin. Okay, man? Nagkakanil yan? So, ang galing ni Paul, ginagawa niya yon Sabi niya, oh, okay, ang kanyang kust- kust- ano, kustumbre, pupunta siya doon sa sinagog. Bakit? Kasi sinagog, binabasa yung Bible at dinidiscuss. And every Sabbath. Kaya nagstay siya doon, three Sabbaths. Reason with them from the Scripture. Nakipagtalastasan. Explaining. Giving evidence that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead. And saying, this Jesus whom I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Kasi itong mga nagbabasa ng Bible, binabasa nila, oh, may pangako ang Diyos na tagapagligtas. May pangako ang Diyos na haring darating. Pero sino yan? Kailan yan darating? Di ba? Binabasa. Kailan yan mangyayari? So in explain ni Paul, dumating na si Jesus Christ. Oh, ito, balik tayo. Kaya pinaliwanag niya. Alam niyo ba, pag binabasa niyo yung Bible, listen, paalala lang, pag nagbabasa kayo ng Bible, huwag niyong basahin para makipagdebate. Ang Bible, may kwento yan. Ang kwento niyan ay yung si Kristo, tagapagligtas, na magliligtas sa atin para sa kapahamakan ng imperno, darating. Sabi ni God Himself, sabi niya, I myself will save you. I will not give my glory to anyone. Kaya si Jesus, hindi siya ordinaryong tao. He is God who became man. Nakakinig yan. Hello? Pinakita niya ngayon from the scripture na ito si Jesus darating. Similar to what Jesus did. Kasi nung namatay si Jesus, may dalawang ano, alagad na nagtatalo. Bakit nangyari kay Jesus yun? Tinan niya sabi ni Jesus, Now He said to them, these are my words which spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day. Parang pinakita niya, alam mo ba si Jesus? Hindi siya lang yung hari, biglang hari, dumating na. Magsasuffer muna siya para sa kasalanan natin. Para 
maibalik tayo sa kanyang kaharian. Okay, Ben? Now, magugulat kayo. Alam nyo ba ang bawat vibe sa Bible, si Jesus nandoon na. Sa Genesis pa lamang, nandoon na si Jesus. Alam nyo ba yan? O, tinan nyo. Mabilisan lang. Sabi na Genesis 3, through the seed of a woman, you will be saved. Okay? Hindi lang sa Genesis 3, sa Genesis 12, from the seed of Abraham, hindi lang si ano, from Isaac, from Jacob, from tuloy tuloy from Judah, dun pa lang sa Genesis yun. Yung Exodus, siya na yung Passover lamb. Naalala nyo? Pag may dugo, sa dugo ng tupa, may dugo sa pasimano, pag dumaan yung angel of death, lalagpasan. Kaya parang sa tayo, pagka kukunin tayo sa kamatayan, pag nakitang may dugo ni Kristo sa yung pagkatao, lalagpas yung angel of death. Oh, hindi ka dadali sa impyerno. Okay ba yan? Okay pa kayo? Oh, ito yan. Sa Leviticus, siya yung high priest. Sa Numbers, pillar of cloud. Yung nag sa kanila. Sa Deuteronomy, prophet like Moses. Sa Joshua, captain of our salvation. Sa Judges, the true judge. Sa Ruth, kinsman, redeemer. Sa, sa Samuel, prophet of the Lord. Sa Kings, reigning king. Sa Chronicles, glorious temple. Sa Ezra, faithful scribe. Sa Nehemiah, rebuilder of the broken wall, which means our protection. Sa Esther, warrior hero, the Mordecai. Nasabi nga nun, sa Job, ever-living redeemer. Sa Psalm, shepherd and worship song. Si Proverbs, wisdom. Sa Ecclesiastes, hope of resurrection. Sa Song of Solomon, lover and bridegroom. Sa Isaiah, suffering servant. Sa Jeremiah, sovereign God. Sa Lamentations, prophet, sweeping prophet. Sa Ezekiel, the one with the right to rule. Sa Daniel, fourth man in the furnace and the history maker. Now, si, 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 sa Hosea, siya yung faithful husband. Sa Joel, baptized with the Holy Spirit. Sa Amos, burden bearer. Sa Obadiah, mighty savior. Sa Jonah, forgiving God. Si Micah, feel that brings the gospel. Si Nahum, Eva, avenger and stronghold. Si Habakkuk, watchman and intercessor. Si Zephaniah, mighty to save. Sa Haggai, cleansing fountain. Sa Zechariah, pierced son. And in Malachi, son of righteousness. Can you imagine? Lahat doon, tinutukoy na si Jesus. Kaya pag nagbabasa ka, lalo mo naintindihan, ah, ito pala si Jesus. Why? Listen to this. What is eternal life? To know you, O God, and to the one whom you have sent. Pakinggan niyo mabuti, ha? Ang eternal life, hindi yung mupunta ka sa langit, maganda, streets of gold. Anong saysay niyan? Para kang nag-asawa ng mayaman, may kotse, limusin, pero hindi kayo nagmamahalan, hindi kayo intimate. Anong saysay? Kung hindi kayo nagmamahalan, kahit anong ganda ng bahay nyo, wala rin kwenta. Magkaiba kayo ng kwarto, hindi kayo nag-uusap. Kaya si Jesus, ang eternal life ganito, yung word na no, intimate, close. Yan ang ginagamit na explanation sa mag-asawa. Si Adam, Bermian, what no, came to know Eve, and Eve begot, uh, began, uh, got pregnant. Biruin mo, nakilala lang, nabuntis na. Ang ibig sabihin kasi ng no, it's an ex, ano parang expression of intimacy between husband and wife. Okay ba yan? Kaya to know God, intimate with God. Nalala niyo, sabi niya, I never knew you, depart from me. Kasi yung word na new, kalong ba all-knowing si God? Yes, all-knowing siya. Pag sabi niya, I never knew you, lumayo ka sa akin, hindi naman tayo close. Nagkakandi niyan. Hello? Now, narinig niyo na to, pero uulitin ko lang. Nalala niyo nung, sino may asawa dito, may asawa? Ayan. Nalala nyo, nandiligaw pa lang sila laki. Di ba? Suhatid ka, susunduin ka, magkikintuhan kayo. Tapos pagdating sa bahay, di ba? Pagdating sa bahay, pagdating mga alas 12 na hating gabi, sabi mo, sweet, ano, uwi na ako. Ogo, ogo, puy. Sabihin, di ba? Parang, bakit? Ang tagal-tagal nyo nagsama kasi parang kulang ang panahon dahil sa, sa intimacy na pinararamdaman nyo sa isa't isa. Tama? Tapos pag alas dos na sabihan, ingat ka, tawagan mo ako pagdating sa bahay. <laughs> pagdating sa bahay, tatawagan na naman, nag-uusap na naman yan, ga-umaga, nasagsukita na naman. Parang gusto na natin magsama kasi yung panahon hindi kasha. Kailangan natin ng walang hanggan. O, oh, tama? Nung nag-asawa na, siyempre iba na ang kwento. Kailangan na may hangganan. <laughs> Bakit? Kasi na-discover mo na yung imperfection ng isa't isa. Imagine mo, perfect si God and He will perfect you. Two perfect individual, kailangan ng forever. Nagkakatindihan. You keep on discovering God. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng eternal life, that they may know you and the one whom you have sent. Without knowing you, without such intimacy with God, you won't care for eternal life. 
Kaya, it's, a, it's an eternal separation from God, which means death. Imagine, ang buhay na walang katuwang. Kawawa. Now, kahit sa mga may asawa, kahit sabihin niyo pang hindi niyo type yung asawa, parang galit na kayo, matanda na asawa niyo. Pero bakit? Parang iba pa rin yung mayroong umaalalay sa inyo. May sumasama sa inyo. Ako sa totoo lang, I praise God for my wife. I praise God really for my wife. Isipin nyo, minsan na-imagine ko, siya nagpa ng damit ko. Bago ako pumunta rito, magbibihis ako, nakaredy na lahat. From top to bottom. Pati buhok ko, inihir, inihir, ano pa niya, spray pa niya yan para matiyak na hindi maghiwahiwalay. Para hindi mag, ano, uwang-uwang. Inaalagaan niya, minamasahi pa yan. Diba, isipin niya yan. Diba, kung ako, isipin ko, paano na lang kung wala siya? Oh, di ba? Naintindihan niyo na. Parang kailangan ng forever. Di ba? Naintindihan niyo? Parang malungkot kayo ah. <laughs> now, balik tayo. Balik tayo sa usapan natin. Kaya, tingnan niyo. Alam niyo bang napaka-importante ng salita ng Diyos na maintindihan mo si Jesus Christ yun? Tingnan niyo. May namatay sa Bible. Nabasa niyo na to. Isang mahirap na lalaki at may isang mayamang lalaki. Yung malaman, lala- mahirap na lalaki, ang pangalan niya ay Lazarus, dinala siya sa Abraham's bosom parang pagpapakilala ng paraiso ng Diyos. Samantalang yung mayaman, nilagay sa Hades. At sa Hades, nakatingala siya, being in torment. Talagang nagdudusa. And so Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue for I am in agony in this flame. Na baka maintindihan nyo, yung, yung Hades na yan, may apoy na yan. Pag namatay ang tao, automatic. Kung sa Lord ka, dun ka. Yung kay, kung sa Hades ka, dito ka. Nagkakadidihan. May apoy na yan. Yung apoy na yon, eventually, sa final judgment, itatapon yung Hades sa lake of fire. Okay? Nandun yan sa Revelation chapter 20. Para, ma, para alam nyo lang. Now, balik tayo. Dito, ang tindi na nung agony. Bakit ka mo? Pag naiinitan ka, gano'ng karaming tubig kailangan mo? Isang pitchel. Eto, ang request niya lang, isang pat- patak lang ng daliri. Hindi na biro yung kanyang pinagdadaanan. Kaya nakikiusap siya, para mo ng awa, isang patak lang ng daliri ni Lazaro. Please, please, ang init na to, sobrang nagdudusa ako sa apoy na to. Now, sagot ng lalak, sagot ni Abraham, pasensa ka na, sa pagitan nating dalawa, meron isang malaking bangin na nakatalaga. Para yung mga naggustong pumunta dyan, hindi makakaparyan. At yung gustong pumunta dito, hindi makakaparito. Pag namatay ka, at hindi ka nakahanda, hindi ka nakaano, hindi mo alam yung solusyon, dadaling ka kaagad doon sa Hades. Ngayon kung handa ka naman, at nandun yung solusyon sa'yo, dadaling ka doon sa lugar ng Diyos. Tama? Nagkakanin yan? At wala nang lipatan. Huwag kayo magpapaloko at magpapalin lang sa mga tinuturo na pwede ka pang lumipat pag namatay ka. Hindi ka na makakalipat. Naintindihan niyo? Sabi niya eh. At, sabi niya nun, at dalawang lugar lang yon. Then he said, nagmamakaawa ako sa iyo, Ama. Sabi niya, that, napadala mo naman po sa bahay ng tatay ko, yung si Lazaro, para naman po, dahil may kapatid pa akong lima eh, para hindi na ho sila, mabagyan sila ng babala, at hindi sila pumunta sa lugar na ito, ng kaparusahan. And sabi niya nun, sabi ni Abraham, teka, teka, pasensa ka na, meron na silang sulatin ni Moises at mga propeta, makinig sila. Hindi po, ang mga Abraham, pag, in, pag may namatay at ang buhay magmuli, makikin, magsisisi sila. Pero, sabi ni Abraham, pero kung hindi sila makikinig kay Moses at sa mga propeta, hindi sila mapa, makikinig at maniniwala sa isang namatay at ang buhay na magmuli. Ha? Ano yung propeta? Ano yung Moses? Propeta? Ano yun? Oh, gusto niyo malaman kung ano yun? Hindi yan yung Bible lamang. Kunik sino yung sinasabi ng Bible. Kaya tinan nyo. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him. Natagpuan na namin siya. Yung tinutukoy ni Moses sa mga batas at ng mga propeta na sinusul- yung sinulat nila. Si Jesus of Nazareth, nilinaw na, hindi taga Pampanga, hindi taga Dabao, hindi kung saan lugar. Jesus of Nazareth, hindi taga Los Angeles, hindi galing ka... Ap- ar- Sabi niya, Jesus of Nazareth. At hindi yung kapitbahay niyo. He is the son of Joseph. Maliwanag na. Tinutukoy si Jesus ng Bible. Si Jesus na namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Si Jesus na nabuhay magmumuli on the third day. He is the one who Moses 
and the prophets wrote about. Unless they believe in Him, they will never be saved. Gusto niyo maligtas mula po sa Hades na yan? Gusto niyo maligtas mula sa apoy na yan? Sabi niya, makinig kayo at tanggapin niyo si Jesus. Yun ang sinasabi niya. Okay pa tayo? Ngayon, pag tinanggihan mo yan at ayaw maniwala, paano na? Eh, ang problema ko, si Jesus yung Word of God. Kaya nga, inaalam mo yung Bible. Kaya nga, inaaral mo siya. Ina-apply mo siya. Bakit? Because I want to be in love with Jesus. Kaya, eh, challenge you. Kaya, pag nag- sino dito nag-aaral ng Bible? Huwag nyo itaas ang kamay nyo dahil walang magtataas masyado. Nakakalungkot. Don't just read. Study. So that you would see Jesus. Nagkakanin yan? What makes it so exciting? You begin to understand, wow, Jesus, thank you. The more you meditate on Jesus, ano nga sa'yo? The more you become sabiha, successful in your own walk with the Lord. Nagkakarinan tayo? No, tuloy tayo. So, and some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas along with a large number of God-fearing Greeks and the number of leading women. Babae! Nung panahon na yung babae, wala kayong karapatan. And yet, they were being discipled by the Lord. At mga Greeks, pero ang malungkot. But the Jews, yung Jews, they were the ones who understood the Bible supposedly. Nandiyan na yung Bible sa kanila. Sabi niya, becoming jealous and taking along some wicked men from the marketplace, formed a mob and set the city in an uproar and attacking the house of Jason, they were seeking to bring who? Paul and the team out to the people. Now, listen to this. Paano mo nalaman na tama yung bi- basa mo ng Bible? Now, alam nyo pa paano? Tingnan nyo mga taon to. they reading the Bible, they study it every Sabbath, pero punong-puno ng galit. Alam nyo, pag kayo nagbabasa ng Bible at napupuno kayo ng galit sa mga hindi naniniwala sa inyo, kabahang kayo, hindi tama ang basa. Kasi ang tamang basa sa Bible, ni ka nagyayabang. Lalo kang nagpapakumbaba dahil lalo mo nakikita si Jesus. Nakikita mo lalo. Kanyari, nagbabasa ka ng Leviticus. Wala kang pagmamalaki. Andali mo maging impure. Andali mo maging impure. Ultimong pagdumi mo, magiging impure ka. Kaya kailangan may patpat ka pandala. Now, bakit? Kasi holy si God. Now, ano siya sabi ng Diyos? Kung wala si Jesus, hindi ka magiging katanggap-tanggap sa Lord. Nagkakadinihan? Okay, okay pa kayo. Nagkakadinihan? Oh, balik, balik, balik. Now, din nyo, kaya ganun na lang yung ano na Lord. Kaya pag binabasa mo, Lord, salamat po na dumating ka. Kasi kung kami lang, wala eh. Ba, pag-isipan niyo sarili niyong buhay. Sino dito magsasabing perfect kayo? Hindi kayo nagkakamali sa isang araw. Meron? Apatay. For the wages of sin is death. Buti na lang may continuation. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Kaya habang binabasa mo, yes, thank you Lord. Nang pananalo ka ng Papa, please kayo, sobrang thankful ka sa Lord sa bawat araw na nangyayari. Bakit? Because Jesus is real. Nagkakaintindihan tayo. No, balik tayo dito. Ito mga tao daw, lalo na papalaway kaya pagka nakikita ka mo, laging mali ang nakikita mo sa nagtuturo, eh, eh, mali ka na. Bakit? Dapat pagmamahal. Kasi kung mali siya, maaaring hindi tayo magkapareho, pero at least sa essential na bagay, parehas tayo. Pero sa mga unessentials, katulad, ano essentials? Si Jesus ay Diyos, siya ay t- nagkatawang tao, namatay sa krus, nabuhay magmuli na ikatlong araw para iligtas tayo. Wala na ibang paraan, kundi pamagitan lamang niya para maligtas tayo. Yun, essential yun. Nakuha ninyo? Pag sinayin mo sa akin si Jesus at, at iba pa para maligtas ka, medyo tagalid ka na. Nakuha ninyo? Now, eh yung mga non-essential, yung gupit, yung do- suot, di ba? May mga nagtasabi, bakit kayong mga ano, pinapayagan yung mga babae, nakapantalon? Alam mo ba sa Bible, ang mga nagsusuot ng damit ng panlalaki ay kinasusuklaman ng Diyos? Hmm? Bakit? Yung pantalon ba? Pambalalaki ba yun? Hindi. Meron naman pantalon pang babae ah. Na- nakuha ninyo? So, magtatalo pa ba tayo dyan? May gusto mo nakapalda ka, di magpalda ka. Pero kung ayaw mo, di okay lang. Kaya ibig sabihin, huwag natin pagtalunan yan. Dapat daw, hindi magpapagupit. Madali sa'yo. Wala kang buhok. Pa, paano yung mahaba buhok? Ano, nakuha ninyo yung sabihin? Kaya, what I'm saying is, yung mga malilit na bagay, huwag na natin pagtalunan yan. Okay po ba yan? Mayroon, pagtatalunan pa, translation ng Bible. Dapat, King James lang. Hmm? Hindi mo naman naintindihan, pa King James, King James ka pa. Ano ba? 
Hindi na issue yan kasi yung translation, hindi lang sinasamba natin si Jesus. Okay ba tayo? Hello? Ngayon, eh bakit? Eh, may mga mali daw. Hindi yung mali. Di hanapin mo sa ibang translation. Baka may tama na. Hindi naman, lahat naman yan. Tao lang tayo eh. Tao lang tayo. Ngayon, pag nag-preach, parang di ko naintindihan yan. Mali ata yan. No, di kunin mo lang yung gusto mo. Ganyan lang mag-aral. Kunin mo yung laman, tapon mo yung tinik. Kung matibay-tibay ka at pinirito naman ang dating, kainin mo pati ulo. Pero ang normal, kunin mo lang yung mapapakinabangan mo. Yung hindi, itapon mo. Okay ba tayo dyan? Now, minsan nagmamature tayo sa Lord. Gusto natin pati pagkanta. Gusto ko yung solemn. Ba? You are a beautiful name. Nothing. Gusto natin ganun. Ayaw natin maingay. Ay, ayoko na maingay. Alis na ako dyan. Hindi ako nag-grow. Ah, listen. Kapag lumalago ka sa pagmamahal, alam mo nagmamahal ka, iniisip mo na si Jesus at hindi na sarili mo. Iniisip mo yung mga tao. Ito ang totoong pagmamahal. Dinadala mo yung tao kay Jesus. Okay ba yan? Kanyari, yung asawa mo, mahal mo, dalin mo kay Jesus. Anak mo, mahal mo, huwag mong bigyan lang basta, dalin mo kay Jesus. Girlfriend mo, mahal mo, huwag mong ibiglang liko, dalin mo kay Jesus. Okay? Nakakanidihan? Kasi pag biglang mo yung liko, hindi ka mahal. Dalin mo kay Jesus. Ang totoong pagmamahal, dinadala kay Jesus. Nilalapit kay Jesus. Pag nilalayo mo kay Jesus, walang totoong pagmamahal. Tatapusin na natin para mabilis. Now, when they did not find them, they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authorities. Look at the words. This men who have upset the world have come here also. Now, that, then Jason has welcomed them and they all act contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And true enough, they were proclaiming Jesus as the Messiah, the king. And they stirred up the crowd and the city authorities who heard these things. And when they had received a pledge from Jason and the others, they released them. Nagbigay ng bond, nagbigay ng, ng bail. So, napalabas sila. So, what I'm saying is, even if there is injustice at that time, they were still following the law. Nagkakaninian, they were still sub- submission. Now, listen to this. Hindi masama mag-express ng ating mga puso against injustice, against, basta hindi tayo galit. Nagkakaninian tayo. Dam, okay lang yun. Hindi tayo magagalit sa gobyerno. Katulad nga sabi ni Martin Luther King nung nagde-demonstrate sila against the injustice among the blacks the, during the apartheid. Sabi ni Martin Luther King, during our rallies, make sure we will leave the place better than what we have found them, how we have found them. Titiyakin nyo malinis pag alis nyo. Titiyakin nyo maayos pag alis nyo, hindi sira. Amazing! Now, dito pag nagla-rally, baliktad. Sira-sira, ang daming kalat. Tapos sabi pa nga, kunyari sa opisina, okay, kung meron kayo, allowed kayo mag ano, welga, huwag kayong manira ng gamit ng boss nyo. ba? Kasi in-express nyo lang naman eh. Bakit sisirain? Bakit babasagin? Walang ganun. Kasi as Christians, we express because we care for justice, but we do not destroy. Are you following? Bakit tiyan hindi na destroy? Because the Bible tells us this. Sabi niya, why? Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with God. And amazingly, yung mga tadakat sa Lonyas, yung mga believers, ano nangyayos sa kanila? Our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Spirit. And with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. They applied. And look at this. You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amazing. Kitang-kita lang kahit ginugulpi sila, masaya pa rin sila. So that you become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. They were very encouraged. They were very encouraged. Now, let's go to verse 10. How are we now to study the Bible? Importante. Paano natin aaralin? Now, so, Sempre tumakas sa sila. The brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night. Tinaka sila nung gabi to Berea. Naalala niyo pa yung mapa? From Thessalonica, Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Doon na naman ulit. At namay sila. Now, these were more noble-minded. Now, listen to this. Pag sinabi mong noble-minded, they are considered educated and, ibig sabihin, dignified. Okay. Nung kami, pag, nung kami, pagka merong pasamasid, no? Kasalta halimbawa ang presidente, ROTC kami, dapat naka-formation kami, nakakatayo ng diretso. We are to listen intently. Why? Because we are to be noble-minded. Tama ba? 
Pag hindi noble-minded, hindi pa educated, bata pa, paano sila makinig? Naglalaro, hindi nakikinig, tama, bata pa eh. Natutulog, bata pa eh, natutulog. Pero pag mga nobles at nagsasalita yung hari, wala yan, bawal matulog yan, nakaganyan yan. Tama? Nagsalita ako recently sa isang military group. Nagulat ako, nakikinig sila, nakaganyan sila lahat. Nakaganyan sila. Sabi ko, relax lang kayo, at is. <laughs> Kasi nakaganoon lang sila. Talagang noble ang dating, parang talagang kikinig sila. Talagang, kasi nga, yun ang tinatawag na cultured. Tama? Hello? Cultured. Then you ask yourself, are you noble? So ito mga ano, nagulat sila. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, they were very noble. Why? They received the word with great eagerness. Sobra silang excited. And examining the scriptures daily. Pagka inaaral na. Inaaral na Sabbath, ngayon aralin pala daily. Para titiyakin lang, tama ba yan? Tama ba yan? To see whether these things were so. Totoo bang si Jesus ang makikita dyan? Totoo ba yung sinasabi ni Paul? And they were doing that. They were studying it. Now, let me teach you how to study. Okay, guys. Be noble. Let me teach you how to study. Para ninyo makalimutan. First, listen intently. Ano ibig sabihin ng listen? Faith comes from hearing. Hearing the word of Christ. Number two, when you read, read, graciously, rigorously, daily, read. Basahin nyo. As you read, observe. Obserbahan nyo. Bakit nyo ito sinabi? Ano yung mga ino-observe nyo? Saan, anong setting nito? Anong gusto niyang sabihin? Sino nagsasalta? Sino ang audience niya? Nakuha nyo? Observe. Lista nyo. Then, try to interpret. Anong sinasabi nito? Ngayon, i-correlate mo sa ibang nabasa mo at saka mo i-apply. Ayos pa tayo dyan? Okay? So, anong gagawin mo? Observe. 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 Interpret. Then, correlate. Then, apply. Okay ba yan? So, at least, observe, translate, or interpret. Then, correlate, apply. Maliwanag? Yun ang gawin mo pa nag-aaral ka. Tapos, kaya nga yung mga isudyante ko, sabi ko sa kala, simple lang gagawin nyo, ha? Isummarize nyo na yung kwento ng Bible from Genesis to Revelation para hindi kayo naloloko na kung sino-sino. Pag naalam nyo na yan, alam nyo kung ano ibig sabihin ng Bible. Okay ba yan? Oh, sino dito yung Christian na ng mga one year and above o two years and above? Two, Christian na two years and above, pakita sa kamay. Wow, I encourage you. Start studying the Bible. Alam mo lang, ano ba tema ng Genesis? Ano ba tema ng Exodus? Ano tema ng Leviticus? Di ba? Tama na yung basa-basa lang. Yung iba ginawang horoscope ang Bible eh. Ay! Mabibless ako ngayon! Sabi ni Lord, sabi ni Lord. Diba? Hindi naman horoscope yan eh. May kwento yan. At yung kwento na yan, ang kwento ng pag-ibig ng Diyos para sa'yo. Okay? So, ito ang challenge ng Diyos. When you read, listen to this, don't be arrogant but love edifies. Remember, hindi ka yayabang because the more you get to know God, the more you become humble. You know why? Bilang kita, Lord, you're so great and holy and yet you love us and you reach out to us. Kaya hindi ka magyayabang. Pero kung nagyayabang ka because of your knowledge of the Scripture, mali basa mo. Because when Jesus Christ summarized the Bible, love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mapapansin nyo, nung sinamarize niya, lalo ka mapapamahal sa Diyos. Lalo ka mapapamahal sa kapwa mo. Ayos ba yan? Nakakadinihan? Now, tingnan niyo po ang sabi ng Bible. But he said, No father, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said, to Moses. I just want to repeat this. If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. And let me end by telling you this. Tinanong ko kanina, Padre Bong, what motivates you to keep on preaching? Honestly, I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm not feeling well. I go, you know why? Because first, I encountered Jesus. He showed His mercy to me. Number two, as a Filipino, Hindi ho madali ang buhay ng mga Pilipino. Rich or poor, they're really having a hard time in life. Every day, I would see people, nag-aabang na sa sakyan, pila, late na ng gabi, aga ulit papasok. Sobrang hirap. And imagine if these people 
will go to hell. Wala na silang nakitang masayang tagpo sa lupa pagdating pa sa eternity, impyerno pa rin. Naintindihan niyo po? All of this are happening because of sin. Hindi niyo ba napansin ang frustration at sa buhay para mas marami kaysa sa kaligayahan? We get so frustrated in so many ways. We thought that when we get married, maghasaya tayo. All the more the frustration, the aggravated. Niba? Isip natin, pag nakatapos ay sa pag-aaral, sasaya tayo. Yung mga isudyante, galit na galit sa pag-aaral. Ayoko na, gusto ko na matapos, gusto ko na matapos. Nung natapos na, gusto na bumalik sa eskwelahan kasi wala, wala na palang bakasyon. Maglilib ka pa pala. Ang hirap-hirap, puro trabaho, trabaho. Hindi ka makaka-absent. Samantalang sa school, lagi absent, may magpagpakain, may baong ka pa, may naawa pa magulang mo. Di ba? Parang lahat na lang hirap. Noong dati, pati sabon mo, hihingin mo pa sa magulang mo, okay lang. Noong nagkatrabaho ka na, kailangan mong bilhin yung sabon kaya hindi ka nalang bumibili. Naliligo ka na, hindi mo lang nagsasabon. sasabon. Kasi, mahal. Kaya pag binasa mo yung Psalm 90, parang ang bilis-bilis na ng panahon, tapos puro pait ang nararanasan. And the only hope that people have, the people have, is Jesus. Jesus who died for our sin to give us a new life and to assure us that by believing in Him, we would be saved. We would be with Him in eternity. Bakit? As you get to know Him, the more you get assured na sa langit ka nga. Kaya ang taong hindi nagbabasa, hindi nag-aaral ng Bible, dalawa lang ang dahilan. Either patay siya spiritually, he does not need spiritual food. Or, he is sick spiritually. Kaya he, he has no parang appetite for the spiritual food. Because the Bible is a spiritual food. Nakuha natin? Or, sobrang dami nating ibang priorities na hindi natin nakisip na ang buhay sa lupa ay napakabilis at sandali lamang. So I challenge you. You study so that you can apply it in your own personal lives and be able to share it to your office mates na ang laki rin ang problema sa buhay. Your classmates, ang laki rin ang problema sa buhay. Your fellow community, ano yung sa homeowners, ano? because they, you knew that they have, they need someone who would really save them from their great frustrations in life. Kaya nga lahat ng mga maskara sinusuotan natin, maskara ng magandang damit, maskara ng magagandang jewelries, pero alam natin deep within our hearts, we are so frustrated that we need someone to deliver us from such. Hello? Do you love your office mates? Do you love your relatives? Study, apply, and teach the Bible. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus is our hope. Tell them that Jesus is our only Savior, the only way, the only life, the only truth, and no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. Nagkakanilihan. Ito, ito, totoo. End na talaga. Somebody came to me. Born again ka ba? Ano pong ibig sabihin nyo ng born again? Sabi niya, yung mga nagsasalta sa kalye, eh, si ko hindi ka nag-aaral, paano mo sasagutin? Yung mga nagsasalta sa kalye, ah, ganun ba? Yung mga nangihingi ng pera, sabi niya, ah, ganun ba? Pasensa ka na. Kung yun ang isip mo sa born again, hindi ako. Dahil hindi ako nagsasalta sa kalye at nangihingi ng pera. Nagkakanilihan nagsasalta sa mga opisina at hindi rin ako nangihingi ng pera. Ano ang born again? Ganito yan. Pinaliwanag ko mula sa John chapter 3 kung ano ibig sabihin ng born again. Pinakausap siya at pagkatapos niya, gusto ko rin siyang makilala. Gusto kong tanggapin si Jesus. And she prayed right there and then to accept Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. Kapatid, listen to this. You study, you apply, and teach the good news. Tayo pong lahat ay yumuko at pumikit. Kung ikaw ay personally, you have no hunger for the truth. You have no hunger for the, the scripture. You have no hunger to know Jesus. You ask yourself, patay ka ba talaga spiritually? If you want life, and I know you're listening now, kala ko ba patay ako? Paano ko nakakarinig? Because you can hear. Because God said to Lazarus who was dead, sabi niya, rise, Lazarus, rise up. And he rose up. Alam niyo, God is speaking even to the dead. If you're dead and you feel that tagging in your heart, telling you, anak, I'm telling you now, I know how, how hard it is for you to live. I know how difficult your life is. I know that you're looking for something that you cannot find. 
I'm telling you, you need me, sabi ni Jesus. And you need to surrender your life to me. I died for you. I died for the very reason why you are so frustrated. You're so bored. I died for the very reason why you, have, you do not have life. I died for it. That is sin. And I want you to know that that sin will bring you to eternal death a greater frustration because you will be separated from your maker from the rest of eternity. And I want you to experience the joy that I have for you in that I myself died on the cross for you. And to assure you that I paid it all, I rose again on the third day. Do you believe me? Will you accept me as your Lord and as your Savior? Friends, if God is speaking to you, you pray to God, you say, God, I need you, Jesus. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying for my sin. And thank you for rising up from the dead. Because with you, I know I would also be alive. If you have overcome death, why too will overcome death? Because I now belong to you, Jesus. So I surrender my life to you and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Friends, pray that seriously. Pray that and take that seriously. And if you are sick, somehow you have lost your appetite of the Word of God. You have sinned. You have, you have turned your back on God and God is telling you now, Son, I will forgive you. I died for you. Come back to me, sabi ni Lord. So sabi Jesus, if you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from your unrighteousness. Come, and I will give you rest. Come, and I will give you life. Thank you, Jesus. So if the Lord is speaking to you and you're sick, you say, God, heal me. I need you. You are my healer. Heal me, Lord. Heal me in my spiritual, Lord, sickness. Heal me, God. Thank you, Jesus. And for the rest of us, I challenge you, for the sake of those who have not known the Lord yet, study, apply, and teach the Bible. Study, apply, and teach the Bible. If you truly love God, if you truly love people, listen to this. Don't think about yourself. Don't think about your comfort. Think of how to bring these people to Jesus. Your children, your family, your relatives, Study, apply, and teach the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Father in heaven, I thank you that you know every one of us in this auditorium. Teach us how to study. Teach us to listen. Studying with the preacher, studying with a small group, and studying on a personal level by observing, reading it carefully, observing, Lord, and understanding what it really means by interpreting it and helping us to get to see the whole picture, so correlating it with other passages and help us to apply them in our own lives. May you, may you allow us to be like George Muller, reading and studying and making himself happy every day. Instead of, Lord, putting breakfast first, may you teach us to read, read our Bible, study your word every day before even eating breakfast, for we find strength in you. Lord Jesus, I pray to really help us all to take your word seriously, knowing that your word is life to us. It's a lamp to our feet. Thank you, God, that you will make us wiser than our teachers because we meditate on your word. And thank you, God, that you afflicted us and we went back to your word. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your word for us to know how much you love us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you and good night.